Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman and I am your GPR professor from LearnGPR.com and I've gotten a number of questions recently about uh, step frequency radar and more to the point is I've gotten some people reaching out due to frustration from talking with manufacturers and feeling like they don't get a straight answer as to what the manufacturer is selling. And I think that's really unfortunate um, that, that there's this confusion out there. Now, I'm going to go into today's video and try to compare pulse radar, the terms, pulse radar, multi-frequency versus continuous wave stepped frequency. I mean, this is a big topic and I'm not going to spend hours on this. Maybe I'll do a live uh, webcast about it and, and, and I'll expand it out to be longer, you know, of, of, of a video with maybe some Q&A, maybe like, a, you know, just like shoot it live on, on Facebook or, or uh, YouTube or something like that. But I'll try to compare all these terms and there are more and I'll bring them out, you know, as we go through this, but there is quite a bit of confusion out there. Now, I want to begin with two disclaimers. Number one, what we're going to go over in this video is an oversimplification, for sure. That's disclaimer number one. Disclaimer number two, my personal experience has been considerably more with pulse radar systems compared to step frequency systems. So I am not coming out with a good or bad or anything like that. I'm giving you my personal experience has been more with pulse radar. However, I have used step frequency. And like Pulse Radar, where I've gotten quality data and garbage data, I have gotten quality data, highly quality, with step frequency and garbage with step frequency. So this isn't, you know, a, a knock on one or another type of system, or, you know, uh, um, or, or or manufacturer or anything like that. Okay, this is a comparison. But I personally had more experience with Pulse Radar than uh, continuous wave step frequency. Now, maybe. I've been getting more of these questions because more manufacturers are coming out with something like this. Maybe that's the case uh, than had in the past. I don't know. But let's try to dissect some of these terms so you can get help. Now, it also means that what I give you as these terminologies, not everyone's going to agree upon. And feel free to roast me in the comments below, as some people love to do. I'm happy to, happy to get roasted. I'm going to give you what kind of I use for each of these terms. And if you're going to go to a manufacturer and they're going to be unclear, uh, then you can hold their feet to the fire and say, is it this or is it that? Just be clear on your terms. Define the terms that you're using. Okay? So I, I encourage you to make, make sure the manufacturers and distributors, uh, that you hold their feet to the fire so they can give you the exact, exactly what's going on within, within their systems. Okay? Pulse radar. Most common radar system that's out there. Generally, in the past although this is rapidly changing, pulse radar systems have tended to be a single frequency system. And the way that it works is you have an antenna, it's your ground surface, let's say you push it across the ground surface, your antenna will produce a signal, okay? Right, it produces a signal. This signal's size, okay? And it's really, it really would be, in a sense, the size this way, okay? It's wavelength is going to be defined by the frequency of the system. Okay, so let's say that this is a, okay, 400 megahertz antenna. Okay, 400 megahertz antenna. It's going to have a certain frequency that it puts out. Now, it is not going to always put out a 400 megahertz frequency. It actually will put out something in the range of 200 to 600. Okay, maybe even a little bit more, maybe even a little bit less. But the 400 is what's known as its central frequency, okay? It's central frequency. And it clusters around that 400, right? So maybe, you know, you have something that looks like this, okay? This is 400, and this is 600, and this is 200, right? So you'll get, you'll get in that range, but obviously most of it is going to be coming within that central frequency. So that's what it is. Now, what happens is when this antenna, the transmitter, gets triggered, it puts out a pulse at a discrete, over a discrete amount of time. The higher the frequency, right, so higher the frequency, 
Okay, the lower the pulse duration. The lower the frequency, the higher the pulse duration. Okay, the higher the pulse duration. The longer, really, it's the longer the pulse duration. Okay, so the lower the frequency, the longer the pulse duration. Why? Lower frequencies tend to have larger antenna. And so to oscillate, you know, some sort of electric charge on it to create a signal, an EM signal, uh, it's going to take longer. This will be anywhere in the range from fractions of a nanosecond, you know, up, up here, okay, fractions of a nanosecond, right, so we can even put, okay, uh, less than a nanosecond, all the way up to multiple nanoseconds if you have a very low frequency antenna. So if you have a 50 megahertz antenna, it's going to be a bunch of nanoseconds for that pulse duration, okay? So less than a nanosecond to... Uh, the greater than a nanosecond, right, in, in this range over here. That's how it works. It puts out a discrete signal over a discrete amount of time. And then the, the, the uh, receiver, okay, so that's a receiver. This is, let's say, the transmitter. Then the receiver gets clicked on. The receiver will, op will receive returning signals for whatever the GPR technician or practitioner defines. So they say it's a 400 megahertz antenna. I want to see at least two meters down. I'll put it at 80 nanoseconds. And so it puts out this signal and then the receiver will receive information for 80 nanoseconds and then it shuts off. The benefit or the argument for this, you know, the major benefit here is highly accurate depth estimates because if you know when it was produced, right, it produced over, let's say, a nanosecond, and, it, and I don't know what the 400 megahertz antenna is off the top of my head. It, it may be more than one nanosecond. It may be two or four nanoseconds. Um, we go over this in another video. But let's say it puts it out, and it's about a nanosecond. It records for 80 nanoseconds. And so you know when this thing was put out, right? Comes in at 40 nanoseconds. If you know how fast the wave is moving, you can say, well, 40 nanoseconds and two-way travel times equals X depth, right? So that's how it works. Discrete amount of time, discrete pulse duration, shuts off, receiver turns on, receiver will record for X amount of nanoseconds uh, that is defined by the user. That is a pulse radar, right? Literally, it's putting out, okay, this pulse duration, that's what it is. That's the pulse. It's putting out an energy that has generally a defined size that ranges plus or minus 50%, okay? Um, and that's the pulse, puts out a pulse, okay, of the ground surface. That's how most GPR are made. That's what most GPR do. So what is multi-frequency then? Here's where some confusion occurs, okay? Here's where some confusion occurs. Multi-frequency. The way that I've heard people define multi-frequency in three different ways, okay? Three different ways. I've seen multi-frequency as multiple pulse Antenna, okay, that's the first way. I've seen it as ultra wideband pulse antenna, and I've seen it as I've seen manufacturers describe it, or I've heard people tell me that a manufacturer described it this way, or as Continuous wave step frequency. I have heard the term multi-frequency used for all three of these. All three. So that's why it can get confusing to especially a new user who goes to one company and they say, oh, we have a multi-frequency. They go to another company and they say, we have a multi-frequency. Yet, they're all these different pieces. Okay? I mean, all these different possibilities. So... Multiple pulse antenna. That means that what I just described, you have 
multiple of those transmitters and receivers on board. Multiple. So you may have, very popular for example, would be you have a um, 700 megahertz and a 250, okay, on board. 700 and a 250 that do exactly what I just described. The 700 puts out a smaller wavelength over a discrete pulse duration, and then the receiver is collecting data, you know, for whatever the user defines. And then they have a 250 that puts out a longer, you know, a, 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 a energy from a longer pulse duration, longer wavelength, but it's still defined with the receiver collecting data at the, at, you know, whatever the user, user tells the GPR. Okay. That's what I generally consider, not generally, that's what I consider to be multi-frequency. To me, that is multi-frequency. That's multi-frequency. Ultra-wideband pulse antenna. An ultra-wideband pulse antenna is the same as I just described, except instead of being plus minus 50%, it may be plus minus, you know, much more than that. Okay, it may be minus uh, uh, 90%, it may be plus 300%. And so instead of, let's say you have a 400 central frequency, instead of being 200 to 600, maybe 50 to, I don't know, 1,000, right? You understand what I'm saying? I'm like talking to you like you're 50 to 1,000. So it's ultra wide band. It's not just plus minus 50, it's ultra wide band. Still pulse, still discrete, but they thicken, usually what happens is they thicken the antenna a bit. And so that creates this, and I'm not an electrical engineer, so I cannot answer this question in detail or with math. But what happens is it creates a, 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 a system that will produce frequencies at a much greater range. Still a pulse antenna. So why is it multi-frequency? The argument is it's multi-frequency because you can use a bandpass filter and say, okay, I only want to look at Yes, it created from 50 to 1,000. I only want to look at 100 to 250. That's all I want to see. Or I want to look at 400 to 600. Take all of the frequencies out. Just want to look at these in between these two, right? Or I want to look at 800 to 1,000. It doesn't matter what it is. But you can, you can basically you know, define a range of frequencies you want to look at and then just remove everything else. The truth is you can do that with a typical pulse freak, uh, 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 pulse antenna. Typical, you can still, plus minus 50. So if it's 400 megahertz central and it's 200 to 600, you can still say, I want to look at 200 to 250, or I want to look at 300 to, to 500, okay? Whatever it is, you can still apply that band pass. The only difference is with the ultra wide band, you're getting a greater range. And so you can still zoom in and define what you want. You can do that with a single frequency pulse radar. Okay, that's basically what an ultra wide band is, single frequency, but with a much greater distribution of, of, of frequencies from the mean. And so I generally don't consider this a multi-frequency. I generally, and this is personal, this is not, you may disagree with me. I'd love to hear your comment below. Please put in the comments why you disagree with me. But ultra wide band pulse antennas, I would just say they're an ultra wide band pulse antenna. And because you have that extended range, you can define a variety of different frequency ranges you want to look at, okay? Ultra wideband pulse antenna. Not, I'm not coming down on it. I'm just saying for my purposes, personal purposes, I don't define this as multi-frequency in my dealings. I define this as an ultra wideband pulse antenna and you can apply bandpass filters to it. Okay, finally is a, a continuous wave step frequency. I've seen this defined as multi-frequency and this has a better, for me, a better fit for multi-frequency than number two does. But I don't consider it multi-frequency because then it gets confusing. And instead what I consider it is what it is, which is a continuous wave step frequency. Now, remind you the disclaimer. I know this worse than I know pulse radar, but this is becoming more popular and the theoretical uh, 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 argument behind it is uh, uh, is, is strong, okay? So I'll give you my kind of simplified sense of how this works. But I will tell you, as new systems are coming out that use continuous wave step frequency, and I'm used quite a, a couple of them now, um, and as I have people coming to me who, who want training, 
I'm going to launch into a much deeper investigation of this personally. I'm going to read a lot more papers on it, dissertations. I've pulled a couple of dissertations and theses already. I'm going to figure this out for you, okay? Because if you want to know about it, I want to teach you about it. And I'm going to figure about, out about it much greater detail. Um, and I'll probably be posting some uh, comments and things like that or, you know, summaries uh, and discussions about them, um, you know, in YouTube, Facebook, uh, or maybe we'll do podcasts or something like that. So we'll figure it out. Um, but what is continuous wave step frequency? Continuous wave step frequency or CWSF. Okay. Now, this has its own subcategories, okay? Whether or not you put gates in the receiver or you don't put gates in the receiver, which in a sense means, did you pulse it or did you not pulse it, okay? So there's a variety of these different pieces that you can adjust, you know, that manufacturers have adjusted within the continuous wave set frequency system model. But here's generally how it, how, 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 how it works. Same thing, you have your antenna, right? You're pushing it along or whatever. Instead of creating, you know, a single, a single wave and then cutting it off and waiting for the receiver, okay, right, so receiver, transmitter, instead of putting out a single one and then cutting it off and letting this come through and, and return if it needs to, it never shuts down, never shuts down. Instead... Right? What it does is it creates a series of frequencies over and over, cycling through those, cycling through those over and over. So what do I mean? I mean, instead of cutting off, it basically produces a signal. I'll come over on this side. It produces a signal. Okay? And so maybe it starts at a high frequency and cycles low, steps lower. So now what do you get? Now you get here, high frequency. Okay, and then it goes, then it'll put out another signal. Okay, that'll be a, okay, and then another one. Okay, and then a longer wavelength. And so what do you get? You get, you can see, short wavelength, longer wavelength, longer wavelength. Longest wavelength, right? Okay, so that's what we have here. Okay, so longest, which means it's the lowest frequency. And this is the shortest, right? This one right here, the shortest, which means it's the highest frequency. It continues to cycle through these over and over. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, doesn't that make it impossible for the receiver to know when the signal was put out, right? That's probably the number one confusion. And the answer is, here's the workaround. The workaround is, if you continually cycle the frequencies, then this will know when it's receiving a high frequency, when the transmitter put it out. So it's making the assumption based on when the high frequency was put out, not when the signal was put out. It's when the high frequency signal was put out. And then when, you know, so maybe this is, again, let's say we have, I don't know, 2,000 megahertz, and maybe this is 1,000 megahertz, and then maybe this is, I don't know, 500, and then maybe this is 100, okay? Totally, you know, or for argument's sake, okay? It may do, it may do uh, 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 tens or hundreds of these things that cycle it continuously. But it, it receives a signal back, right? So the signal has come out. Now there's a signal that returns, okay? Right from the ground up to the receiver. And the signal looks like this as it's coming up, right? It's coming up now, okay? And the signal looks like that. Well... That signal was from a 2,000, right? The signal received 2,000 megahertz. When was that produced? Well, you can say it was produced when it was produced here. And so it can come down. And then it receives another signal. And that signal, okay, maybe something like this. Or maybe that's the 1,000 
right, megahertz, based on the frequency of the, sig of the returning signal. So that's how it does the workaround. Instead of having a pulse, it continually flows through these frequencies. And what it allows you to truly do is now go in and say, ah, let me see the 1,000, let me see the 2,000, let me see the 100, and focus in on these different areas of the frequency spectrum to try to define what you're looking for, okay? That's how this works. One of the benefits to this that, that I have found is that you can move faster with a step frequency than you can with a pulse because it's always going. You don't have to wait for the receiver to get it. Now, again, don't totally quote me on it. It's my personal experience, okay? I found that you can move faster with step frequencies and that, my, that the customers that we support have been able to collect data faster with a step frequency. Um, step frequency radar. I know it's simplified, okay? But here's those, that's the breakdown. What is a pulse radar? What's a multi-frequency? I think a multi-frequency is multi-pulse radars. Okay, we went over ultra wideband. So U, W, B, right? Ultra wideband. Okay. So versus, I'm adding to it. Versus ultra wideband. Went over ultra wideband is basically a pulse radar that just has an extended series of frequencies that it's collecting. Versus a continuous wave step frequency, which works in this, somewhat works in this manner. I know I'm simplifying it, and again, if you're an electrical engineer, I apologize for disgracing what you do. Um, but in a, in, in, from my perspective, to teach it to people who want to be able to filter through all this, that's the best way that I know to explain it, okay? Continually cycles, multiple different frequencies, literally different frequencies, okay, over and over and over again. And when it receives those frequencies back, it pegs when it was produced by the transmitter, okay? Um, so... I hope this was helpful. I hope that this helps you understand a little bit of the differences between the different radar systems. Different manufacturers produce each one of these. Some manufacturers produce multiple of these, okay? Um, a number of, of, of them do. Um, so if you're talking with a manufacturer and they tell you that they sell a multi-frequency, you should ask them, is it multiple pulse radars? Is it a single ultra wideband radar? or is it a continuous wave step frequency, okay? Make sure you hold your feet to the fire. If this was helpful, please subscribe to the channel. If you liked it, please click the like button. Uh, put your comments below, whether you agree or disagree with, with the way that I kind of laid it out. If you like the terminologies that I use, um, let me know. If you hate the terminologies that I use, I still love you anyway, and you can put that in the comments below and tell me that you hate the terminology that I use. Uh, it's all good. Please share it with somebody that you know and make sure you pop over to learngpr.com. Sign up for our uh, free introductory uh, 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 training video. Uh, it's about 40 minutes. Gives you over the, all the basics. And I uh, hope to see you in there. Good luck.